One of the most delightful places in the world. Hidden in secret in El Paso County. And it's such a beautiful afternoon about, I don't know, I think it's around 50 degrees, I guess. And I, I want to talk about bridging, building bridges and creating opportunities for conversation. I have a lot of messages on my car, stickers, things that I've written on my car. Um, and I get feedback from the public for those things. Sometimes the positive feedback is, you know, uh, regular um, every week. And sometimes I get some negative feedback, um, usually hostile um, white males, usually older. And uh, here's the thing. I'm a veteran. I'm also a former active duty army wife. I did that role for, I don't know, 17 years-ish, almost. And uh, we were dual military. And even though there's a lot of things that, a lot of experiences I didn't have in the military, the military, our military, is one of the most diverse institutions in this country. Um, so the whole world opened up to me when I joined the military. And I believe that the uniform does not discriminate. Humans absolutely do, but the uniform does not. And even though I'm not in the uniform anymore, veterans have a voice. We have a voice and a duty to, that, to our country that remains for those veterans who are able, who have the ability to realize the dangers inherent here at home, the domestic dangers. Yeah, Russia is a problem, and it rips my heart out that we can't just run in and save Ukraine. Um, it breaks my heart that we had to leave the people of Afghanistan. It tore my heart out that we couldn't take care of the people of Syria. Um, but here at home, you know, veterans have a job to do as well. And that job may be simply using your voice, running for office, standing up for those around us who can't stand up for themselves. Men, if you're truly my ally, if you're truly a female's ally, then you need to get your butt in gear and start standing up as an ally and standing beside us, standing with us, standing for us, and understanding that our life and world experience is different than yours. Uh, the misogyny, women can't stop misogyny, and people of color can't stop racism. That puts the onus on a whole lot of veteran males especially white males, that's a tall order for you to, to get active, to become the anti-racist and realize that our uniform never discriminated. It didn't discriminate when you were wearing it and it doesn't discriminate now. It is for everyone. It's for your colleagues who are, your former colleagues who were maybe a different gender or a different sex than you or a different skin color. And it's for everyone regardless of those things now. And it is really a critical time because as you've all seen, uh, 
Trump opened up the doors for the hate crimes and for all kinds of discrimination. He brought all kinds of things out of the woodwork. He made it okay to be a racist. He made it okay to be a white supremacist and a religious nationalist. And we need to send those people back into the woodwork. But part of how we do that, those people, some of those people are our friends and neighbors and family, right? We have to start talking and having conversations. And obviously, some of the people who are diehard white supremacists, we're not going to change them. But some of the other people who, they just vote their identity. And they have different definitions of family uh, than we do. Um, you know, it's kind of like those books that help for helping couples. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And then there's the five love languages, right? Um, those sources aim to explore and explain the differences between men and women, right? Generally speaking. Well, the difference between progressives and many Republicans, especially far-right Republicans, it's, it's a similar thing. We have different needs and different definitions and a different understanding of many, many things. And we have to be able to start talking about those things, the morals, and how those morals are part of our identity, and speaking to them using their languages. And maybe we can get them to, you know, maybe they'll start understanding our language as well. And so this is doable, and I absolutely believe it. So um, I'm going to keep focusing on this uh, kind of conversation here in El Paso County. I would like to be able to foster those conversations like um, the group called Food for Thought does. They facilitate conversations over meals with groups of people who are all very different, uh, mostly who have never met each other before. And they are facilitated conversations to help each other learn about the other person. And it's such an incredible tool that we can use to, um, to understand each other and maybe realize we have more in common than, than we want to believe. And that gets lost in all the politics, it gets lost in all the arguments, and um, we need to take back the, the, the idea of having conversations with each other and understanding each other. So anyway, um, that's where my thoughts are today and, well, all the time, and I'm hoping that we can continue uh, expanding on those conversations um, here in El Paso County, not just during this election season, but beyond this election season. So whether or not you choose to vote for me as county assessor or anyone else, um, understand that all elections are local and in order for these things to be local, we have to be talking to each other about these local things. And we can't talk about these local things if we're not communicating, if we're fighting and acting like we hate each other, even though we've never met each other. So just something to think about. And I hope everyone is enjoying this beautiful, beautiful Monday afternoon.